Hi, I'm Dave Whitehead. I'm the Vice President of Research and Development at Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories. In this video series, I'm going to show you how easy it is to set the SEL T400L. The SEL T400L is an ultra-high-speed line protective relay that trips in 1 to 5 milliseconds, depending on the line length, as well as some system and fault conditions. The relay uses a number of new technologies based on traveling waves and incremental quantities. To configure the relay, we'll use the SEL Accelerator Quick Set software. Launch the Quick Set application, start a new settings file, and select the SEL T400L driver. The SEL T400L settings are grouped into three logical areas as follows. The Protection Settings menu allows you to enter configurations of the SEL T400L device itself. The General Settings menu allows the configuration of device identifying information and the enabling of advanced settings. The Power System menu allows you to enter configuration parameters related to the power system, including CT and PT data and line parameters. The Protection Elements menu allows you to configure the SEL T400L protection elements, traveling wave differential, incremental quantity directional, incremental quantity distance, and the trip logic. The fault location configuration is also under the protection heading. The reports menu allow you to configure the SCR and the DFR functions of the relay. The communication ports menu allow you to enter the port settings for the relay. Now we'll go through all the settings and show you how to select settings for a simple two-terminal application. But first, let's look at the sample application that we'll cover today. We apply a pair of SEL T400L relays to protect a two-terminal line without in-line series compensation or compensations in the vicinity of the line in a three-pole tripping application. The relay we are setting is located at the left terminal, which is connected in a breaker and a half bus configuration. We connect the current inputs to the two CTs and the voltage input to the line PT. We have a remote SEL T400L at the other terminal. We use POTT and DTT schemes over mirror bits via the SEL ICON multiplexer. We use the SEL 2814s to connect to the ICON. We also use a direct fiber optic channel between the two relays for differential protection and multi-ended traveling wave fault locating. Under protection settings, general settings, we have an option to label our SEL T400L in accordance with our project documentation. We enter our company name, let's say it's Great Utility or GU. We enter our substation ID, we'll call it the North Hill. We enter our relay ID, let's say SEL-T400L-001. We also have a chance to use advanced settings. If we change EADBS to yes, advanced settings include contact input debounce timers and fault locating for non-homogeneous lines. We're not going to use these features today, so let's leave EADVS at no. Make sure you remember to save your settings from time to time. Okay, let's move to the communications. The SEL T400L is equipped with a total of six communication ports. Ports 1, 2, and 3 are mirror bit ports over fiber. We can use these ports to communicate with the remote SEL T400Ls for POTT and DTT applications and to signal to and from local SEL devices. Port 5 is an Ethernet engineering and SCADA port. Port 6 is for direct fiber connections to the remote SEL T400L for advanced protection and fault locating applications. And of course, we have a front port F for periodic local engineering access. Let's configure port 1 for communications with the remote SEL T400L. We'll enable the port by setting the E port to yes to allow transmission and reception of data. Next, we'll allow POTT applications over this port by setting EPOT to yes. We'll keep the pre-configured mirror bit settings. TXID and RXID will need to be reversed for the remote relay. Next, we'll need to decide if we use the direct transfer tripping from the remote TD21. Our application uses a secure digital teleprotection channel, so we're comfortable with enabling DTT. We don't use port 2 and 3, so we'll leave those disabled. Next, we'll configure the front port for periodic local access to the relay. Enable the front port by setting E port to yes. We'll need to decide on the highest access level for this port. The SEL T400L supports the customary SEL access levels. We'll set this port for the highest permission level, which is C. Next, let's quickly specify the Ethernet port 5 for permanent connection via Ethernet to engineering access and SCADA. All we need to do is enable the port. 
Finally, let's configure port 6 for direct fiber communication to the remote SEL T400L relay. This channel is used for traveling wave differential scheme, multi-ended fault locator, and as a backup channel for POTT. We'll enable the port by setting ePort to yes. We'll also need to set the transmission address and the receive address for the channel. This addressing scheme is used to prevent accidental cross-connection of the SEL T400L relays. Let's label the relay we are setting as 100. And we'll label the remote relay in the scheme as 101. When setting the peer relay, we'll use the transmit address as 101 and the receive address as 100 to match the two relays. That covers the general settings as well as the communication port settings. In the next video, we'll look at some more details of our applications and show you how to enter the line configuration settings. Thanks for watching this video.